Welcome back to the Diecast Museum and the 164 scale junkyard. Today I'm opening up a sealed box of Greenlight Hollywood Series 33. Six vehicles set, chance of a chase in there. And we are surely going to be adding at least a couple of those vehicles directly to the junkyard. Uh, not that the cars are junk, because certainly, as you can see, the cars in my junkyard are not junk. They are not broken up old Hot Wheels and the like. They are actually some of my very most prized uh, weathered collection, and even the unweathered ones are actually duplicates that at some point I will do some dusting and rusting to so that they all look very junky. Uh, I'm not really sure when that day will come, but for now... Let's take a look at this sealed case. We're going to take it over to the table for a full unboxing and opening up of each of the models inside. All set to open up this box. It took quite a hit uh, in the shipping process, as you can see. I don't really care as long as the cars aren't broken inside because I don't keep them in the packaging. Same true for these all-terrain Series 11 vehicles we saw in a couple videos ago. Meant to open those up, so we'll open those up. At the end of the review, they're going to go into the rest of the museum onto the Plano display walls. But let's get this uh, camera set on a tripod so we can slice and dice. Here we go. Got my knife ready. I'm going to cut the tape. Does not look like there's any disturbed tape on it so far. But the way to tell if these have been opened or not really is to look at the paper sleeves between the ah, it has been opened. See, there's styrofoam peas in here. That tells me the seller has pre-opened this set and removed any chase vehicles. I'm not going to name names, but uh, anyways, it was an eBay seller, so you got to be watch out for that. Be mindful. Uh, really no need for all these styrofoam peas. Maybe there was, actually, considering how much of a crush the box got. They really should be technically double box, but like I said, it looks like we, they have survived. We've got the John Wick 1974 Checker Taxi. I've got a lot of Checker Taxis in my collection now, but, you know, it's one of my favorite castings, and I do pick these up whenever I can. So, of course, you can pause on that if you want to read about the John Wick movie. Very cool. I like that one a lot. This is another great casting, one of John, uh, Greenlight's older castings, and nice to see it coming back. The 1968 Dodge Charger RT. Very classy looking black with matte black roof. Another John Wick car. And some more uh, some more tales to the story there by the looks of it. And here is definitely going to be one of my favorites in this selection. It's 1983 Ford LTD Crown Victoria. South Dade Police, I think it says. And this is from the Ace Ventura Pet Detective movie. Again, another synopsis there for you to read about. Very cool. Definitely wanting to get more of this car. Really like these models. Greenlight did an awesome job on them. So that one probably is going to go in the junkyard for a while. But here is the car that for sure is going to live in the junkyard for a while. Certainly until I can get a duplicate to do even more with it. And that is the 1973 Chevrolet Chevelle Malibu. This is a brand new casting from Greenlight. They have not produced this car before. Uh, I'm not sure what Drive is. Is that a movie? The Hollywood series usually indicative of movies or television series. Wow, check out the chrome tailpipes on the back of it. And so we are going to open up all these models. We can look at them closer in just a moment. And there you go. That'll answer the question about what is Driver. Skilled Hollywood stuntman who moonlights as a getaway driver. Cool. Don't think I've checked that uh, show out. So I'll have to... I have to watch that at some point. What a mess, all these styrofoam peas. Here's another really awesome car for the collection, also from Drive. Uh, the 92 Ford Crown Victoria with the steel wheels. And number 662 and 85 on the car. That's kind of weird. Why does it have two numbers? If you know, let me know in the comments. I would expect that the car would have one number that would be the same, but who knows. Uh, I'm not sure if that was the same one. It looks like the same story. One final vehicle. This one's also going in the junkyard, at least for a little bit. In case it hasn't already, I'm pretty sure I did open one of these up before on the channel. But here we go. 88 Jeep Cherokee Limited from Beverly Hills 90210. That's an older television show, which I did not watch. And uh, there's the little synopsis on it as well. You can pause there if you want. 
So nice selection. This has got to be, and I don't say this very often, but this has got to be one of the best six vehicle green light sets I have seen uh, in a while, certainly for 2022, although we're just getting started this year. Great start with this series. I've always enjoyed the Hollywood series, and I don't think I ever miss this series. Packaging is all pre-cut and ready to go, but I want to take one last look with you guys at these cars in their packaging because they do look really good, especially if you are into the Hollywood theme. Cars look amazing. So there you go. They're all ready to come out, pre-cut, ready for the review. Same with the all-terrain. And then we're going to take these vehicles directly to the junkyard for their placement in this video. So stick around after the review portion to find out where the cars are going and which ones are going to head off into the rest of the diecast museum. First car I'm going to take out of the package is this brand new casting. Let's see what this one's all about. Very exciting. Wow, it's got a camera zoomage going a little bit right off the bat. Super, super nice looking. Does appear to have an opening hood. We're going to know in a second. Let's get it out of this plastic blister now. Very cool. Very, very cool. Looks to be in very good condition. And uh, checking out those tailpipes as well. They appear to be uh, glued into some peg holes, much like the hitch and tow trailer hitches are on the trucks. Well, they might be a little bit of a strange angle. I'm sure we could adjust that. Wheels look pretty good. Good width for the car. They fit within the fender wells. Uh, window is a little dirty. That's going to be on the inside, unfortunately. I don't think I'm going to be able to polish that up too much. We can always try. Now, we need to get this hood open, of course. I forgot my pick. Hold on a second. Where is that pick? Let's try and get this hood open with the little plastic pick. If indeed the hood does open. I don't really know if it opens or not. Certainly not looking easy. Ah, no, I don't know that Greenlight... This might be another one of those hoods that Greenlight makes as a separate cast piece on the model. But they actually don't open. Which is very odd that they do that. I mean, it's all right. It's nice, but it's a little confusing. I'm going to just give it a shine and see if we can get some uh, some of the fingerprints and oil marks off of the paint. There does appear to be a paint issue on the trunk lid right there behind the back window. And as you can see, a ton of glue has spilled onto the back uh, dash sill or whatever it's called behind the, the back seats. See a big blob of glue in there. So I just don't understand why Greenlight can't get the gluing process going a little better. You'd think in the year 2022, we would be able to figure out how to do that. Certainly, the other manufacturers don't have this issue. And I'm sorry to keep bringing that up over and over again, but it's quite bothersome for me. On to the next model. Nothing against the model, though. Great model. Awesome that Greenlight does make so many different castings for us to collect. But really, seriously, guys, come on. Okay, here we go. Another awesome model with a ton of grease on it. This is why, if you're not an opener, you might reconsider and want to open your packaged cars if you care at all about the model. I don't know what the long-term effects of having all this machine oil on it are. Probably nothing. Certainly nothing worse than having glue spilled all over it in the manufacturing process. But here you go. You can see it shines up quite nicely uh, just with a little microfiber rag rubbing action. And to serve and protect, well, if only that was true of the police in Ottawa right now. I'm not going to bring up anything political. That's about all I'm going to say. So anyways, um, very cool car. Still, I have no idea why it would be two different numbers on it. And we don't have a license plate, interestingly, on this police car. So that's a little odd. Maybe it got lost in the car chase. Like I said, I haven't watched Drive. I am going to watch it, though. It sounds like it's a pretty cool movie. Now on to the Pace, the Ace Ventura Pet Detective car. I vaguely remember a green and white police car in the movie. However, I, uh, I'll have to rewatch it to really know for sure where that was in the movie. And uh, let's see, nice paint job on this car as well. Oh, I just put a fluff on the back of it. 
great looking authentic wheels. And oh, that focus did not work. I'm just trying to see what's on the door. It looks pretty cool. And uh, awesome looking grill, headlight work. Again, uh, no opening parts on this car either. And uh, a ton of glue holding that light bar onto the roof. But uh, very nicely lined up tail lights. That's sometimes a hard thing to get on these tiny little models. Wheels are a good width. There you go. There's two generations of Ford police cars. Wee-er, wee-er, wee-er. Cool. All right. We got three more of these to look at. Then we're into the all-terrain. Let's go for the uh, Dodge Charger next. That's a pretty cool looking car. Ooh, this one looks shiny straight out of the package. How's that possible? Pretty darn nice. Very nice wheels on it. These are, like I said, older castings uh, from Greenlight and also it has an opening hood. One of those rare things that you see on the new models now, not very often. The Checker Cab, however, we're going to see that next. It's a fairly new model and it has a great detailed engine under an opening hood. So there we go again with one of those obscene white walls that somehow can't be lined up in the 21st century with modern manufacturing processes. So that's going to get slid off. We'll do that later though. That's unfortunate because I really like the white walls on this car. Thankfully, the other three are pretty good. So it's going to look like a spare tire and uh, nice details on that as well. Very cool. How does that look next to the other muscle car? Very nice. Boy, all these cars might just end up resting in the junkyard for a little bit, just so I can admire them right here in the diecast room. Okay, let's get the uh, Checker Taxi out. This is the 1974 model. Awesome details on this particular casting, as you can see. Right up to the thing on the roof. Looks like the licensing or permit stickers on the windshield. License plate. And uh, fare cost, flat rate, fare stuff. I'm not sure if the zoom's helping us here. We might be in a little too... No, well, let's go in a little bit farther then. Got the silver medallion. Thank you for all the uh, people that responded in the comments to let me know about what those silver medallions are. It's a licensing thing for the most part, from what I understand. And uh, that was seen on a Caprice Classic, I think, in one of my previous videos where I was kind of wondering, what is the silver medallion? Let's take a look at that engine. No pick needed here. And can we get a good view of the engine? Because it's a nice one under the hood of this one. It's very detailed. Check it out. Battery, reservoir, radiator. One of Greenlight's more detailed engines, actually. So that's pretty fantastic to see on, like I said, a fairly new model. No issues whatsoever with this one. We haven't done the roll test, but we'll do that at the very end. And we've got the... Uh, 88 Jeep Cherokee Limited now. Super cool model. Brand new uh, casting for the end of 2021. So we're seeing it on a heavy cycle of, of uh, paint options, which is awesome. One of the best things about Greenlight is they do have a lot of production and a lot of paint options for the vehicle. So if you don't like one paint option, wait a little bit or shop around and you'll find something that might suit you. So we've got good details on this jeep as well license plate the 4.0 liter badging behind the uh on the tailgate got the suspension components on this one authentic looking wheels nice clear windshield actually this one is uh is in good shape as well so we just had a couple couple cars unfortunately with the glue issue nothing serious mind you uh the paint issue is pretty small on this car just coming back to it and the glue well i'm not really going to notice it after i'm done this review I'll probably forget all about it so overall, I'm going to give this selection, as far as castings go, a 10 out of 10. Um, and as far as quality of construction goes, well, I guess I'll give it about a 7.5 out of 10. But rollability, we got that. So that's big. Nice rolling cars. So it's awesome that Greenlight's got the rolling mostly figured out. Um awesome looking selection so we got a few more just bonus round vehicles i'll open up quick before we head over to the junkyard it's a big heavy casting 
Altering Series 11, one of the older series. I'm not sure how I missed it. Uh, so there you go. It's a nice big Chevrolet. Heavy duty. He's got running boards, all metal. Um, needs a little bit of a buff. Great that these are true 164 scale too, as you can see. It looks, looks right next to the other vehicles. And then we've got the 68 Jeep Jeepster Commando. This one's fully outfit with uh, some backcountry gear and a removable roof. We've got the jerry can, spare tire, a winch. Is there a winch? Yeah, there's a winch. Removable top. Wind in your hair type driving. Nicely detailed uh, canvas look plastic roof. And it should fit into some pins. I'll do that off camera because I tend to break little pins off when I'm really struggling with these things filming at the same time but i imagine we can probably line that up so the gap is gone apologies for the focus going in and out here yeah so i don't think that one's gonna end up in the junkyard same with the uh the other truck the chevrolet uh, we're definitely gonna take some of these over to the junkyard though here we are at the junkyard nina's on guard guard cat so we got the vehicles that are just brand new to the collection where to put them now is the question. Well, I've already done a quick scan, and I know that this Crown Victoria here, which I think actually does have an opening hood, because when I look at the very similar casting Green Lane has put out, just from a few years back, uh, it also has an opening hood. So there you go. We're going to just put that police car in there for now. And I love when the hood's open, because... As you can see with the uh, charger, it's just nice to have them in the junkyard with hoods open. It kind of makes it look a little bit more alive. And of course, we've got the taxi as well. I think we're going to go over here and populate this area of the junkyard a little bit. We don't have a checkered taxi in the, uh, in the junkyard currently. So I think it looks fine right there. We've got some other kind of service type vehicles. There's a different taxi. And, uh, oh, we found the Fords while we're over here. All those old Fords. Fords and Mercuries. So perhaps we'll just uh, tuck one of these kind of in. Temporary parking situation, perhaps. I'm not sure if that one's going to stay in the junkyard. It looks a little shiny. Definitely needs some weathering. Of course, all these vehicles look a little shiny. There's a Jeep Cherokee. And there's some more Fords. There's the, uh, looks like the Men in Black Ford. Squire Wagons. So, well, we found Jeeps. So I guess we could put another Jeep over here. It's kind of filling up the junkyard here. And uh, this is definitely, looks like all six vehicles, as it turns out, are going into the junkyard. Now this one, I want this one kind of front and center because it's very cool. I do need a little path for my guy to get to his uh, camper and uh, past the old John Deere lawn tractor. But this car is new to the junkyard, so maybe he's just going to be having a look at it. Maybe it's just going to be placed uh, kind of temporarily next to the big old Pontiac Le Mans. Yeah, I think that looks about right. Got lots of room still to navigate. And, well, the rest of these are going to go into the Diecast Museum. So there's only two left. I don't think we're really going to go for a look there, but let's just cruise around. Uh, this was, of course, seen in the previous video. It was a pretty good thumbnail, as it turned out. Sitting on top of that Yatming branded Audi Quattro, all smashed up. Just a basic little $1 car from yesteryear. And here we have some more green light stuff. Well, green light camper. I was doing some custom work on it. Took all the windows out of it. A box truck missing the cab. Don't know where I got that from. It is all metal and quite detailed. And then the Ertl loader. The unbranded material handlers is what they're called. I bought these years ago. I've had lots of questions on what they're called, where they are. They actually don't have anything on the base. Let's just take the opportunity to look at one. And uh, maybe it'll help you out if you're trying to buy one. As you can see, completely unbranded. And I did not, unfortunately, keep the packaging, so I have no idea what they're called, but they are 164 scale material handlers. 
quite a nice detailed piece and uh, articulated, although very fragile. Got the claw there. And well, that's the junkyard. I know everyone likes to see the junkyard. It's certainly pretty cool. Uh, probably the main feature of the Diecast Museum really is this junkyard. And another question I wanted to answer for you guys while we're doing a little, these uh, review videos can turn kind of into an update video in a way. And uh, I should take this opportunity to thank you guys for all your support actually over the uh, last while there with all the awesome comments and stuff. I do read them all, really do appreciate it. Uh, one of the comments was asking, where do the cars go, the duplicates? Well, uh, they go in the same spot where all the cars that aren't on the wall yet are. The My Hot Wheels Collection 2006 and beyond is still uh, basically packaged. Actually, everything from 2016 or 17. That's what those numbers are. Yeah, so I've only got two Plano cases with 2017, 18 cars in it. Quite a few with 16, one with 15, one with 14, a whole bunch with 13. Not really, 12, 11, 10. So I really did stop opening cars about uh, Hot Wheels cars around 2009. So I do have quite a few there. And uh, of course, I was hoarding those cars back then. I was getting duplicates like crazy. I was living in Ottawa, well, Canada. And I was close to about three Walmarts and two Toys R Us. And I used to just do a, uh, whew, used to do a lot of shopping. Glad I don't have that problem anymore. Um, some of the older stuff. Goes in here. This is where a lot of the cars that uh, Steven sent me have gone. Because um, they are a lot of duplicates. Found a few McDonald's cars. So those are kind of in temporary stasis. But my older vehicles do tend to go into the Plano cases. Which are also uh, marked by years. 1988. As you can see quite a few blown Camaros in there. And well nothing's for sale. I'm sorry to say at this time. There will be a time where I will sell off some of my duplicates. But. I currently just haven't made the time nor have the interest in parting with anything. I'm a little bit too young to do that. Still a very uh, avid collector, as you can see. And we are making our way through all of the stuff that I had accumulated on the bottom of the floor. If you remember, this was lined up right from that tripod. All the way here, several cars thick with uh, things I need to review. And here's a sneak peek at things that are coming. A lot of you guys have been asking, why don't you buy some era cars? Some of the more quality stuff. Uh, Eno. 64 mini gt well i'm listening i've got several samples here everything's going to be opened up that you see uh some more johnny lightning as well even got an old jada in there auto world miho exclusive patina series waiting for the rest of the patina series to arrive i do have it on order but due to supply issues we haven't seen them yet here in canada so i have one of those definitely getting open up putting in the junk here i got a few hot wheels that's the full set Found that at my local Walmart, the Forza Horizon Hot Wheels set. These are only a couple bucks each, so why not? And well, that's the video today, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Smash the old like button if you enjoyed it. Give me a thumbs up. And of course, happy hunting. We'll see you soon.